There I am. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Hey, everyone. It's Kate Richberg, and I missed my cue. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let me fire that uh, stage manager. Oh, right. I'm the stage manager. Well, it is great to have everybody here today um, for our bead shop live. Um, I am going to uh, let you guys know right off the bat that you can find us on all of our social. We'd love it if you'd follow us at beadshop.com on our Instagram. Join us over on Facebook at The Bead Table, um, our Facebook group. We'd love to have you over there. And of course, you can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at beadshop.com. And we would love to have you there. So um, please do join us. Um, hopefully my connection is going to stay stable. It seems like it's dropping in and out a little bit because as you can see, I am at the bead shop offices, but it looks like it's stabilized now. So um, bear with me. If for some reason it drops out, I'll come back on. So um, just hang in there with me. Um, and of course, uh, uh, you can find all of the information on this project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. Um, and of course, sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. Speaking of new products, we've got a lot of new stuff that's coming down the pike. I'll talk to you a little bit about what's going on on Friday. But uh, for today and for right now, Let's get this show on the road. So, yeah, I'm sorry if there's um, some connectivity issues, but I'm doing the best I can over here. So um, just hopefully uh, if you want to pop out, pop back in, maybe that will um, uh, work with your feed. But uh, sorry, I'm doing doing the best I can over here. So um that's what we've got today. So uh, hopefully it'll be nice and clear on replay if you're watching it on replay. So um, let's get this show on the road, shall we? So, oh, and Gita, of course, is over in uh, Facebook land over in Denmark uh, doing some moderating over there. And uh, Janice is over on our YouTube channel doing some moderating over there. And Gita says, which just so great. She did the splice on her Budapest wrap, which is awesome. So it's great to have uh, to have you done with that. Great, great job, you guys. That's awesome. Um, okay. So let's get this going. And again, if you're having some blurry issues, uh, jump out of the broadcast, jump back in, and maybe that'll fix it. So I'm a one-woman show over here. So uh Bear with me, if you will. So um, today, you guys, we are going to do part two of this epic looming project. And I stopped the project here because I wanted to talk a little bit about where I'm at with it. So let me go ahead and just add it to the stream here. And we will talk about it right now here and I want to tell you what I've done so far and what we're going to do continuing on up okay so this is so last week you saw how I loomed the piece I, I strung up the board did all of that and I left you with um the um question I guess of how are we going to add the beads onto this project so that it will um so that it will what do I want to say um so I'll be able to add the beads on and off of the warp threads um good I'm glad that the stream view is clear thank you Michelle I don't know, maybe my camera, let me clean. I usually try and clean my camera beforehand too. So let's see if 
if that helps the front view. So let me let you have a really close up view of this piece here. Um, I So if you'll notice the beads that are on the sides, I've started to do this looming portion and let me open this up just a little bit. And this is well, this is where I started to have a little bit of an issue. Okay. So if you'll notice the looming section that I'm doing, I'm doing that with eight dots. And can you see the transition between the beads that are on the warp threads and the beads that are on, um, then when I start to do the looming section of this, can you see how um, there's some space there, right? Can you see that? Well, I'm using a dots there and I think that's not going to work. So I just stopped and we're going to switch things up just a little bit. I mean, I figured this was such an epic project that I might as well show you, <laughs> as they say, how the sausage was made. Okay. So, um, Anyway, so uh, so let me back up just a little bit. So last week when we talked about um, the loom, we talked about how to um, use a design tray. Let me pull this up here. And you can see here how I've been using um, the design tray as the loom. And I also showed you how to thread the jewel tool, right? And so what I did was after I warped it and stuff and I started to string these beads and start to figure out the design of the beads, a couple of questions came up and I can't remember who it was who said on the broadcast, Kate, are you going to have to um, taper or, or um, graduate these center strands. So that got me thinking, okay, uh, that I do indeed have to graduate them. Okay, so I graduated them. And so let me show you here. Here was my little drawing to remind you guys. Okay, so the necklace is going to come around the neck like this. This is going to be beaded. There's going to be some loomed portions, beaded portions, and loomed portions. Okay, does that make sense? Then I figured I would have about 24 inches of woven project here, and I'm going to need the beads right here on the warp threads. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to weave the pattern. So in the center section here of this um, necklace, this section is this section right here. So let's talk about that, and then we're going to talk about we're going to talk about this part, the transition. Okay, because again, this is going to be pretty epic. Let me get rid of these here. So we can just look at this uninterrupted. Okay. So I have 10 warp threads here that I've divided up. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's four, three, and three that are running through all of these beads. Okay. And so the suggestion was made, Kate, are you going to graduate this center section so it hangs nicely? And so I thought about that when I was doing this. And I'm like, yeah, I will. I'll have to do that. So this bottom one. So what I did was when I was stringing this piece, I, um, I came in and I strung everything up. And then I taped everything nice and tight. So I had, 
kind of a mock-up of how all of the strands would sit, if that makes sense. I'm going to see if I can share that with you here. Um, bear with me here just a second here, and I'm going to pull that into the stream so you guys can see what that looks like. So bear with me here just a moment while I do that. Hold the phone. Let me see. Let me get that and this one and this. It's uploading. Bear with me here. So kind of like when, can you see this? So when I do like a necklace or a graduated necklace, I kind of laid everything out and then I taped it tightly. You can see on the left and the right. And I kind of pulled the strands a little bit so I could see. See that center strand, how I needed a few more beads in that space to make it to make it sit right. So I fiddled around with this for a while. OK, and so you can see that now I have this layout. OK, so then. the beads themselves i did this center strand a little differently you can see this middle see how this one has the spindles and that um, melon bead in the center and the little hishi are great for letting me size this exactly like i needed to so see how i use two here and here because i needed just a little more space okay then the top strand, if you look at the top and the bottom strand, those are exactly the same. OK, but the bottom strand has two more melons per side and the hishi so that when it sits and I'll show you that. Um, that photo one more time when it sits, you can see. And see here that second strand, um, that middle strand, how there's no hishi between the melons. I had to add that hishi to make it a little bit, um, you can see here, to make it uh, just fit just perfectly right here. And then I, I added the two at the very end. So this was a little fiddly. So if you're attempting this project, this is what you want to play around with first. Okay. Now you also want to cut your threads and I'm going to show you what this looks like on the back. I took all the threads and I strung everything so it so there's four in the center, three on the bottom, three on the top. OK, if that makes sense. And then let me I'm going to put this um, this photo up here. This may have been a little bit of overkill, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't twist anything. So bear with me again. I'm going to upload another photo so you can see it. It's coming. I made these little kind of holders for my strands. OK, I got some cardboard and I cut these little grooves in them. And what I did was I used those grooves to help me make sure that my threads were all in order. So down here at the bottom in these grooves right here, you can see I'm pointing at the strands from the bottom section went all in there in in order. Then I got a second one. And I put the strands on the bottom also all in order here. So I ordered all of the strands out. So when I came to tie these threads around the box, let me get this a little bit higher. I took them off, kind of kept everything flat. I don't want to lose my needle. Then I flipped this box over 
and I tied those on right there, okay? And so then I took the other ones out, the middle ones out of these little things, held them kind of flat, pulled them, and tied them here. And then I did the same thing with the bottom ones. So it kind of helped me to wrangle and make sense of all of these threads. I don't know if you need this, but that's what I did. Okay. So, so I've got this. Okay. And so I started, let me show you this. So I started, let me pull this picture out so you can see this. Uh, let me get it on here. Here we go. I just had these on my warp threads and I thought, great, I'm just going to start weaving. Can you see here when I brought my first row of weaving down, how there's now space, there was space in between that first row of weaving and my first beads, right? I didn't like the way it looked, right? I'm not making this epic necklace for it to look like, as my friend Mary says, the dog's breakfast, right? So I thought, well, I'm gonna need some beads in there, okay, to fix that. So this is kind of where we are right here, and I need to make another adjustment. So I thought I'd just stop here and show you, okay, um, what I'm thinking. So here is, so what I did was I put A dots on the ends and I untied them and I'm gonna show you how I did this. So just stick with me. And I just really strung them on willy nilly and I didn't really think about checking how, you know how we say when we're stringing something that the piece has to have air, right? Um, the, these bottom A dots, they displace each other and they still, they, I still have that problem. I don't have enough air in between. Okay. So when I came down and pushed all of my first row of weaving there, yeah, it, I didn't love it. Right. It didn't look great. So I went and I'm using the Duracoat Galvanized Gold, the same one that I used in the Geode project. Remember, we're doing that. We're basing this design. We're going to do that here. I'm using the eight aughts. And so I went and I grabbed the 11 aughts. OK, so I thought while I was changing these out, I'll show you how I tie them on the board. You know, Trish was saying, and maybe I'll try it. Okay, if we use the beadsmith macrame board, would it work as well? Thinking that using spools under the thread would give us the space needed. Well, it might. And <laughs> Carolyn said, oh my God, my head is spinning. Well, just tuck in, Carolyn. It's gonna be a little bumpy, but you and I are both learning at the same time. So it'll just stick with it. Just let it wash over you. It'll uh, it'll all come out. You'll you'll get it. Just hang in there with me. So let me show you this board, okay? And then let me show you um, how I connected it, and then we're gonna deal with this section. I know it's a lot. This is an advanced project. It's a lot to take in, but just just go with me on it. Just sit back, take a sip of coffee, breathe in, breathe out. We're going to be okay. So first of all, I'm going to take out this first bit of loomed section. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to take it out here and those beads all go away. So goodbye, those beads for now. Okay. So now I'm going to switch out and I think 
what, and I'm going to test this. I think I need, instead of eight aughts here, I think I need 11 aughts. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to flip this over. This is the one I'm going to be doing. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to get real close to this. This is how you know how old this board is, this bead board. I don't know if you can see it. See how this says the bead shop? It has a code on the back. This is, this is, I think this one is actually my personal one from home. That was from our brick and mortar. So it's kind of funny that this box is, I don't know, 20 years old or something. Anyway, so you can see I'm getting up close right here. Here's the knot that I tied. And this might make it a little bit more clear. Can you see how I tied these e each of these three sections together here? These three, these four, these three. Okay. So I'm going to untie this one. Now, I've just tied it in a square knot. And a square knot is pretty easy to untie. I also, if you'll notice, I don't have tails that are all that long, so that was my fault. I really should have cut, I don't know, maybe like four feet or something here, so I had plenty of thread to work with. I'm just going to deal with it because I can deal with these short threads but I don't want you to do that so when you start this you're going to cut 10 strands that are about four feet each okay and you're going to string those center sections in whatever beaded pattern you like and this that the pattern will be on there'll be a, a, a project map so you'll be able to see it um and then uh just make sure that when you're doing that, that you kind of check it and make sure that everything is, um, you know, sitting, it's cascading nicely, graduated nicely. So here we go. I untied that one. Now, let me lift this up and you're going to see these are still tied on. So see, these guys are still on there. Right. And here's my section. So it's here. OK. So I'm going to take off. I'm going to keep trying to keep these threads kind of nice and flat. And I'm going to take these three sections. There's two eight dots on each one. I'm going to take them off now. I don't want this to all end in tears, and it may. I don't know. Sometimes, I, sometimes I've cried on live TV or live uh, video, but not today. Today is not that day. But to make sure that I don't unstring anything, I'm going to put a piece of tape on this. You could also put, um, you know, thread the thread stoppers or whatever, but I'm just going to tape that there so it's not, uh, I don't accidentally pull the threads all the way out, right, and have to restring this. So <clears throat> let me take all these off. So those will go there. Now, I've got 11 knots, and these buggers are small, right? And especially when you're live, they feel smaller, <laughs> right? So just bear with me. I just have to get four, three on this bottom here. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to come in. Remember how I had my little, I made last week, I made that needle with the big eye. So I'm going to thread my thread through that little big eye extender. And you know what I'm going to do? Uh, my spidey sense, my bead sense is telling me that I'm going to need two on there. So I'm going to listen to my bead intuition. Is that not going to be too big? For this big eye, I might have to change needles. Let me see. 
Can I pop them on there? I might have to use a, uh, it goes on there, but probably a um, uh, wire uh, collapsible eye needle might work a little bit, or flexible eye needle. But I don't know if I have any sitting here. Let me see. Let me see if I do. This might be one. Nope, that's not it. We've got some new flexible uh, eye needles that are coming at you um, that I think you're really going to like. We just got them in. They're going to go up on the website soon. Um, I don't know if this is going to go with that twist, so I'm just going to keep going with this. So here it is. I'm going to move that knot instead of to the bottom. I'm going to move it to the side. Let's see if that helps. And I'm going to put two on here. Now remember our rule. Yeah, see it goes right on. It's fine. Our rule is that in order for any type of beadwork to work, right? You need to have some air. We want it to be visually snug, but we don't want it to be physically too tight without having any movement, if that makes sense. Because anytime beads rub or anything against your thread, that's going to be a, a, a danger zone. That's going to be a place where the beads may, um, may break. So see the difference here? I can already see the difference that that is... See there and see there, that makes such a difference. So I think that's the way I'm going to go. And see when they all sit like that, see how I can see the channel that's opened up. That's going to fit that A dot when I loom. So let's make haste and let's do it okay so i'm going to take this tape off no i'm going to put this tape on this side not super tight but tight enough to hold it and then i'm just going to really carefully because the tape is kind of sticky i'm going to kind of let the tape kind of slide off that thread okay Take these eight dots off, put them back in their dish, get my 10, my size 10 or size 11s. And, you know, when you're making a piece like this, so you saw a little bit of my design process last week. So if you didn't watch last week's episode, go watch it. Okay. And if you're confused, if you watch this one right after that one, uh, you should be in better shape. Okay, but just stick with me. It's kind of like, you know, how, how do you uh, eat an elephant? That old joke, well, one bite at a time. That's the same thing, this type of project. Don't think too far ahead, right? We just want to problem solve what's in front of us right now. Okay, so here we go. Those 11 knots. All right. So now, I, was it Trish? Trish, I think you asked, how would the um, beadsmith board work? Well, I have one here. I thought I had one here. I do. It's right here. Let's take a look and see if it does. Okay. So here's the macrame board. I'm going to turn it over so we're not looking at that grid. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring this over here. You know, if you had this larger one, I think it might hold, but I don't think it's going to be quite as 
see, I need that tension here on this board. So I'm going to say I'm going to stick with my board. I think that's a better choice for me. Okay, but I just wanted to try it. So let's come in and take that down. I'm going to take off this tape very carefully so I don't pull the thread out. Now, I'm going to lay this here. I'm going to flip everything over. Bring this strand around. And tie a square knot like you're tying on the top of a package, okay, or a parcel that you're sending out, right? And again, this is where <laughs> longer thread would have come a little more in handy. Let me just maybe use the, get that there, get my finger down there. And I'm the boss of this thread, right? Right, you guys? So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna get all three of those strands. Let me see, I can get that all through there. There we go. And tighten it down. There we go. Okay. And turn. So there's that one. And you can see I've got some good tension there. Okay. So let me do these. I'm going to untie both of these. I'm going to do all of these to, so it's not like watching paint dry here with you. If it's time to go get another cup of coffee or hit the loo if you need a quick break, now's the time to do it because I'm going to just repeat this. But I, I'm going to have to do all of these guys here. The square knot for unknotting the square knot, you kind of have to find where the square knot is kind of crossing. One of the multiple strand sections crosses over the other multiple strand. And I just pinched at it a little bit with my pliers. Now I can insert my awl in there and see how it just undoes. It loosens. If you know how to tie a knot, you guys, you got to know how to untie a knot. If I weren't doing this on a live broadcast, I would untie each of these in turn and then string them and tie each section back. I'm courting disaster a little bit here, but in the interest of time, this might speed this section of the demo up just a bit. So I'm going to just go for it. Loosen that up with my plier, get my awl in there, try not to split those threads. Um, and speaking of threads, this is the micro sealon in fine. Now, again, I would cut 10 strands at about four feet each, and I'd put four in the center. And then I would put three on either side. Let me get here. I'm going to put them, lay them down. That's the center one. Bear with me here. I'll move the camera in just a second. There we go. Okay. Like this. So now I'm not going to tape. I'm just going to be very careful, I hope, as I take all of these beads off the edge. I'm going to go at Kate's speed because you saw me do this before a little bit more slowly. So here's this. Here are these. And it seemed like the right thing at the time, but you have to read your beads, right? So I was thinking that I could just use one 11 aught and then one 8 aught. But as I put the 11 aught on my thread, I saw that that 8 aught would still be a little too bulky to help me turn my corner. So I'm just going to come in and do two here.
right here and here. This thread is just a little too um, big to make it easy to string without a needle. And this is a size 10 sharps, but you use what needle you like. And again, I use that little needle eye extender on this. Um, other threads that you could use besides this micro, you could use KO, I suppose, especially um, on the weft threads, the threads that actually weave from the right to the left when you're weaving. I'm going to use micro for all of it because it's going to be a necklace and I don't mind if I see the threads um, a little bit in this piece. Okay. Um, the micro, I think, is a good weight. I think it'll hold all of these. These beads aren't especially heavy, but there are some semi-precious and stuff here, right? So this section is a little bit heavy. Not overly so, but it's not, it's not, you know, just all seed beads. So there's my little eye extender. I made the extender portion of the eye of the needle with KO because that's what fit in the eye of the sharps needle. And then I just tied a little overhand knot at the end. And then I um, and then I cut away the tails kind of close to the knot. Okay, so this side, I'm going to double check it because I don't want to miss one before I, before I tie it on. And if your eye needle eye extender starts to look a little shabby, mine looks like it sees, has seen better days, just make a fresh one, right? Just put a new extender in. So here are those three, these four, and these three over here. So that side is complete. Let's go over here and let's do these. And I made that uh, this needle, I did it last week, I think, right? Didn't I? I've got a fresh needle over here. Let me see. This one look any better? Not really. I think this will hold up. We'll see. If I have to make a new one, I will. So let's string this up. And I think these 11 knots will also come in handy when I'm weaving this closed. Um, I'm not thinking too much about the closure, but I may have to narrow this down. So if I do, I can um, do that by using the 11s. And I'm wondering, as I'm stringing this, and I may check it, you know, I've got both of these sides that I can experiment with. So I'm gonna see how weaving one, my first row with 11s versus eights, I'm gonna do that on one side and I'm gonna do eights on the opposite end. And we're gonna look and see what looks better. Okay, almost there, so thanks for sticking with me. I didn't wax this at all. I feel like the wax might kind of get in the way, um, so I didn't wax it. Um, usually, sometimes with my weft, the thread that I'm doing the weaving with, I may wax, but I don't think I'm going to do that for this. This KO... I mean, I'm sorry, the Ceylon doesn't split or it sticks together pretty well. On the home stretch here, two more of these. The 11 knots you can see that I'm using, it goes through that micro doubled, right? So it's gonna, it's gonna sit in there. Um, you know, you can get multiple strands through that 11 knot. The hole is larger than you think. 
And here we go. And then one last one. Then we're going to tie these on and then we'll be back in business. Okay, there we are. All righty. So now, very carefully, I'm going to make sure that these are in the right order. So I have to kind of pay attention to what I'm doing. Those are all strong. This is my top one. So I'm going to put this one to the side for the moment. And I'm going to tie this one on. So I'm going to hold it here. I'm going to flip this whole tray over. Let me raise the camera. I want to make sure that all of these threads are pretty even. These threads are even shorter than my last ones. But I'm going to come in, tie them. See how I'm tying this bundle? Oops. I'm tying this bundle fairly um, closely, close up to this first bundle that I did. Okay, like this. One of them got a little short, so I had to adjust it. So there it is, that short one. There we go. I'll try this one more time. So when I say cut four feet so you've got plenty of thread, I really mean it. Let me get the all to help me get this under. And tighten, pull that nice and tight, flip it over. So this one's here, this one's here, and let me do this one now. And it's the right order, right? It's this one, this one, and this one, yes. Okay. And flip it and bring it round. There's one really long one here. I think I've got enough room. Tie them all on. So I'm tying these on individually instead of, if you remember last week when I did this board, I went around and around and around, right? So it was all one big piece. Well, one big piece, I ended the broadcast saying, oh my gosh, how am I going to get my beads on there? So each of these warp threads has to be able to be worked individually. Okay, so that's why I didn't wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. So that when I've done a little bit of weaving here, I'll be able to string some more beads on and then do the same thing, right? Then do some weaving. I can also, as I'm weaving, I can pull my piece like down here, right? So I can have more space to weave and string. And then I can come over here and pull it down over here, okay? So this is all movable. So let's go ahead and figure out that first, what I call kind of the header row or the, the weaving header row, how that's all going to sit. Now notice, this is a graduated necklace, right? So when I weave, the piece, this has to loosen up a little bit because I want everything to line up here and this is going to be a little looser this one's going to be a little looser right and this one will be a little bit tighter because they graduate so i'm not going to worry about that on this side yet i'm just going to go ahead and weave okay so let me come in i'm going to get my all and i'm just going to separate my strands a little bit and make sure that nothing's too twisted. 
see how I've pulled them apart? It's a little bit hard for you to see. Let me get my... There we go. Can you see that there? So I'm just going to pull them in. And again, if you're having trouble with your video freezing, my signal is real strong over here. So just jump out of the video and jump back in. You should be able to see it okay. So there's that one. Here's this one. And here's this one. That's good. And now this one here. There we go. Whoops, one of those beads escaped down there. We get it a little closer. Okay, so where I'm going to come in to weave my first row, I'm going to weave it up here, okay, so that when I put my beads underneath, then I'll push them down. So up here, it looks a little bit easier to do that. See how I push them apart a little bit. There we go, okay. So let's put in our first row. I'm going to put in eight dots. I'm going to see how it looks. That's what, again, my beading sense is telling me. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to cut thread wise, maybe about a yard and a half. It's easy to add thread on the weft when you're going back and forth, right and left with your weaving. So, um, so I'm not going to have a super long strand that's just crazy. Okay. So I'm going to string my needle with the eye. And then Trish, that was a great question. I'm going to answer it in just a second there. Uh, there are my eight dots and I'm going to put on, I've got nine openings or nine little troughs, right? Nine rows, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I've got nine on my needle. Let me bring it into camera range. Okay. So now I'm gonna send that needle under everything. And I'm going to keep a little bit of a tail here. Maybe this is about six or seven inches there because I'm going to need to weave that in. Now I'm just going to take this one bead at a time. Okay. Like we should take life. Take it one bead at a time. I'm going to put one bead here in this first trough. And I'm going to stick it, stick the needle through and stitch it in. Then see how these two threads want to sit together. So I'm going to move it and look at these two lined up. So I'm going to stick my needle. I'm going to go through that second one and the third one. You want to make sure that you're not accidentally stitching two threads together. So see, there goes that next one. So let me bring that bead in. Let me open it up. Once your little rows are established, it's not going to be so difficult. But getting these first ones in there can be a little bit of a challenge. There we go. That one's in there. And stitch it through. And again, notice how I'm working kind of far away from those beads down there. Because this, I can push it down. Up, oh, see, I missed that one. I don't know how I did that. So let me just take this back. Oh, nope. You can never take it back. You always have to just undo the needle. So I'm going to do that. Take it out. There we go. Yeah. 
you know, and you can start small with this. If you're like, Kate, there is no way on the beater's green earth that I'm going to come in and make this giant necklace project, then make a bracelet or make just a section. You know, it's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to commit right away. Right. Just make a little practice session section. When I teach my metal smithing classes, that's what I teach my beginner students. We make little samplers, right? So and you remember when you were learned how to cross stitch when you were a kid? I don't know if you did that, but I did. And we made samplers, right? So you don't have to you don't have to jump in full bore with a necklace. You can just do something short, like a bracelet or something that's just going to be maybe part of a necklace or something that you put in a shadow box to sit on the wall or whatever. There we go. This is coming along a little faster, except of course now my needle came out. Hang on. There we go. Can you hear can you hear me now? I think you can. Good. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. For some reason the internet dropped right out, but I'm back. Still stitching on this thing. Give me a th good. Okay. Good, good. We're good. And let me just get these last two in there. This one And this one, there we go. Now you want to check after you've done this, let's all take a big collective breath. Whew. Right. Okay. Uh, and we want to make sure. So this was a question that Trish had, I think. I'm going back to find this question. Hang on. Yeah, here we go. So Trish asked, I may have missed this, but does it matter about the order of strands from each side? Meaning group one with three strands from one end to the three strands on the other end. Will it matter? Great question. So there's a few things that, yes, I think do matter. And I'm going to pull this up so you guys can see it. I have tried to keep these sections, this bottom section, this center section with four, the top section with three, all together. And I've tried, and when I kind of pull these little warp threads out and kind of arrange them, I try and make sure that nothing is twisted here. Does that make sense? So it matters somewhat. So you just want to be aware of what you're doing here. You don't want it to be one big twisty mess. But if one thread is twisted a little bit, I don't think it's the end of the world. 
Okay. So let's get back to this. Let me get that white paper out of there. And I'm going to pull this down or push it down. Yes. Yes, friends. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Look at how that sits. <laughs> Look, so when I tighten these up, see when I push this, this one up, and this one up, and this one up. See how much better those guys look than that ADOT one did. And I'll show you that ADOT one again. Um, see, it looks better than, looks better than nothing. And then you remember how the ADOT one displaced it too much. So that's the right thing. Okay, so now, um, oh, and Janice said, that's very smart of you, JP. Um, I would think that when you do weave more to the back, you can unknot it and untwist the strands and put a new knot in again. Exactly. Okay, that'll work. All right, so now I'm going to um, weave in a design okay i think i'm going to do two rows um, of the gold and then we're going to do <clears throat> maybe i'll do th three rows i want a little bit of space here in between these strands and where this motif begins okay so let me look at three i'm going to go a little bit more at kate speed here now, if you'll remember, this one that I did up here, that is 10 rows. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is 9. So the way that this diamond is going to look, sorry, the way that this diamond is going to look, see how it has two gold in the center? It's actually just going to have one gold. So I'm going to um, adapt this um motif a little bit or I could have done it exactly the same as this and done but I didn't want one more strand to go through so two four six seven eight nine so I thought I would do an odd number rather than an even so remember your beads come underneath and I'm going to come back in with the tail that I have here and weave it in and tighten everything up but for now, I'm just going to move forward and not back. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm just going to push the beads. This is just like regular bead weaving here. Make sure that you catch each one with these size eights. If you can't go all the way through, just stitch a bit through and then come down and stitch the other ones through. There we go. And let me do one more row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. Bring that underneath and you can really turn this board so you can really get in there and, you know, push everything up there. Get your finger there. Roll them. I roll it a little bit. Remember when I did that little um, demo last week on actually doing the looming portion, I put this through and I kind of roll my finger underneath it. There we go. And I think that's good. I think I'm going to start this motif because it's a necklace and, you know, I, I want to get I want to get this show on the road. So I'm actually going to take the motif from this one, but we're going to um, omit one of the rows. So I'm going to start with a gold. Hopefully I don't screw this up. Gold. 
I just didn't have time to chart it out. So I'm just going to go off the top of my head. So bear with me here. Gold, one blue, two blue. I'm going to do three. I'm going to take it out from the middle. So I'm going to do three of the mustard, one, two, and three, two of the blue, and one of the gold. And remember, Emily's little chart, right? So you can chart out. This has the 10 rows, but you can chart out like I could chart out put the nine in and then color everything so I would just follow that row okay but I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it just a little bit okay and see and see Donna is saying that she wants to do some bead weaving but <laughs> this seems to be way above what you want to do you know Donna I have tried that illusion um project that I did the illusion you can't go wrong because it's kind of I think I've got charts for it too and you can't screw it up wherever you put a bead will work okay so don't don't worry try the illusion bracelet or just string the board and get that loom weaving chart that Emily made and just make your own pattern or just do like two colors, right? So you you kind of go back and forth between the colors. You can't go wrong, right? So this next one, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to read my beadwork here. So I'm going to need this one. I'm going to need uh, one blue, two yellow. One, put that in there so you can see this. One of those iridescent blue. And then once you do half of it, you just repeat it backwards, right? So I need the two yellow, the blue, and the gold. Yep, that looks right. Put it underneath. Tighten it up, get your finger underneath there, roll your finger to roll them up in between, and stitch it through. This is, kind, you know, this is an advanced project, but, you know, who cares, right? Just do a little, if you haven't done any weaving, right, do a little practice. I'm telling you, do a little bit of a practice piece. Come in there. And then, you know, work your way up to it here. Now, this next row only has, there's no blue in that row. So I need two yellow. I need three blue. One, two, three. And then I'm going to reverse that pattern back. And one. Hopefully that adds up to nine. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Yep. You can do it. Just practice. This is what you're seeing me do today is the accumulation of 30 years of practicing, right? Of beading. And read, you know, when I say read your beadwork, you know, you can kind of look at the pattern that you're making and then you, you can, as you push it down, you make sure that it's right, right? There we go. So our next one is where we're going to add the white. So I'm going to put a, a, a gold, then the yellow. I'm going to need a few more of those mustardy ones. Then the yellow, then the blue. Then I need three of these bad boys. One, two, and three. I've kind of had a moment with white beads lately. And if you know my work, you know I never add white, very rarely, to my work. I always add cream instead. And um, I don't know. I feel like I like the crispness 
of the white. So I don't know. That's what I used. Roll those beads in into their own little lane. Stay in your lane, beads. Stay in your lane. And once you have this first pattern established, then you just repeat it. Right? So we're halfway there. We're going to do the one that has that gold in the center. Okay? So I'm going to pop. Whoops, you can't see that right there. So that edge has a blue. So I'm going to go blue. This turquoise, pardon my reach here while I do that. This turquoise. Two white, one, two. Reduce it from the middle. So that's one gold. Two white, one turquoise, one blue. And yeah, this pattern works up pretty quickly. There we go. See that there? And this is actually what the pattern, to be really honest, I wanted an odd number, but when I was warping the bloom for this bracelet project, this one, I made one too many, and I had started weaving already. And so that's why this has the two here, like this, OK? So this is actually what I wanted with that one single one in the center. So you know, but you would never have known had I not told you. So now I'm in the center here, right? So now I can put this away. I can focus on this. And I can just repeat this, 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 and this row, OK? So let me do this at, again, as I like to say, Kate Speed, and um, finish this motif, OK? How am I doing on time? Not too bad. Great. Good. Thanks for hanging in there with me today, you guys. This project, as I started to create it, I realized, oh, this is going to be an epic one, right? So. Um, so thanks for hanging in there. The other way that you can also check and see if your motif is correct, if the order of the beads are right when you're on here, before you push them under the warp of your threads, pull them all tightly down and just give it a quick visual to make sure that they're all lined up correctly. OK. Michelle is asking, I'll put this up. She's heard rumblings that the Picasso finish is going away. Any truth to that rumor? I have not heard that rumor at all. Um, JP, let's get on that rumor and see if we can either confirm or deny. Um, we have not heard that at all. So, um, but who, know, who knows, <laughs> you know, right? Um, but we'll, uh, we'll take a We'll take the temperature and see. Uh, we'll ask a few of our vendors and see what's going on. Let me add a few more beads out here. I'm on this one, three blue, one, two, and three. Two of these mustard, one, two. Someone commented earlier and said they can't wait to see how this hangs. You know what? I... Um, can't wait either. I think in my head that everything is going to sit correctly. So I'm hoping that I'm giving it enough air for it to sit nicely. Um, Janice says uh, this one, Janice's explanation, and that is true because Picasso, we've been out of Picasso seed beads for a while, right? Supply chain is crazy right now. So what Janice says, and you can see that up on the screen, that we haven't heard a word. What happens with the coatings is that Miyuki has a yearly schedule that they have to do all the coatings. Everyone usually is out all at once when they do the Picasso. So yeah, they, um, you know, it does happen where that schedule, if 
a color is really popular more like now it's hard to get everything um you know in in a timely manner so um so we haven't heard anything my guess is it's a supply chain issue not a discontinuation issue unless there's something going on with the manufacturing um, because picasso hands down is everyone's favorite including mine i love picasso seed beads that picasso seafoam my favorite up oh, see how i pulled this here and i looked at it and see how i was missing that blue so before i even pulled it through i knew that that was wrong so i fixed that mistake and pull it under roll them into their lane and stitch it through make sure you catch i kind of run my needle across the ceiling of all of these little beads so i make sure that i catch the bead and not the thread that's going through the bead three of these one two whoops sorry about that one two and three two of these whoops i've only got one here and let me grab another pardon my reach and one of these okay i've checked that out yes looks right bring it under and roll it catching them all this way and you can feel if you snag the needle on a thread you can feel it okay and that motif number one is complete let me pull the camera up and Lorraine says it's very satisfying once you get the groove going with the weaving, isn't it? It is. It so is, right? So now what I'm going to do next, and you're going to see this again in probably on a free tip Friday in a couple of weeks, okay? Because I've got to catch up with myself. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to weave probably, I think, here maybe up to two um motifs right this one let me bring this back so you can see it so it'll kind of be like that okay then i'm going to take it off and i'm going to measure it on myself because i want to see let me add me here i want to see where that motif is going to sit. So if this total, if this piece, if I want those center beads to sit about where my necklace is sitting here, this is going to be about 22 inches ish, I guess. So if that goes about here and then the weaving motif goes to about here, as it curves around my neck, I need the beads. I need beads up here. So as it goes around, it fits nicely, right? It doesn't flop out. Then I think at the very, very back, I'm going to weave a short section here that's going to go into the clasp. Okay, so center section, two woven sections at the side, another beaded section, and then two woven sections in the back. I think that's how it's going to go. Okay. Um, so we'll see what happens okay someone is asking about a close-up of my necklace and yes donna thank you for asking because this uh i'll talk to you a little bit about what's happening on friday i know i promised it last week but it's actually happening this week let me go full full scale on this one i wore this um 
one of my tribal and trade pieces because we're getting ready for our trunk show that's happening. Okay. And we have some beautiful pieces that the trunk show starts on Friday. Uh, today, if you're watching us live, it's Wednesday, January 19th. So the trunk show um, is coming up this Friday, the 21st. And um, I've got some beautiful pieces that we got from our African trader. Uh, mostly come, they come from Ghana. Um, beautiful, beautiful pieces. So I use that. This is a piece that I use some of the things we have here at bead shop. These guys here, these currents, we still have some of these really beautiful um, lost wax cast um, brass pieces here. But I also use some pieces from my own collection um, of things that I've had for years and years. This is a pre-Columbian bead right here. This bead, I don't know, maybe a thousand years old. It's beautiful, pre-Columbian jade, um, which I love. Um, and so I strung this up on leather cord. So you may want to peruse our tribal and trade collection that we have on the website. The trunk show is going to happen on Friday, so there's a limited amount of what we've, um, what I got, I shopped, um, and so there is an extremely limited amount, but it'll go live on Friday, that Friday, um, right after the broadcast, I'll be on on Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, and then the trunk show will go live at noon Pacific, okay? So, um, you may want to get some extras of things that we carry all the time. The travel and trade section, like we've got these beautiful ebony pieces. Um, and this is a perfect way to use some of your specialty beads. Leslie is asking, how does this clasp, this necklace doesn't come undone? The clasp here, I used this, um, one of our recycled glass beads, the currents. Can you see this here? And I doubled the strand through and I tied a Chinese button knot here. Then on, I strung everything. And then here I did a wrap with the leather, brought it down and did a silk wrap. So when it closes, I made that loop just tight enough. Leslie, can you see that? So that it doesn't come out. Okay, like this. Pam, you said that you're going to be traveling. Don't worry. It's not our last African trade bead trunk show. Don't you worry. I have one planned actually for the spring um, and the next few months. So don't worry. You, you'll have a chance to get some beautiful pieces yourself. Okay. So that's how this is done. You could also put a conventional clasp on it, but I like the way that this looks. I think it really um, talks to the spirit of these beads. So um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me through this um, epic adventure with the loom. You're going to see this again in a couple of weeks. Um, we have some really great projects that are coming up for you guys. One of them is Janice's, where she's doing her, uh, she's doing a mala piece that I think you guys are really going to love. We've got some new beads coming up for that. Um, a whole bunch of new stuff is coming. So you guys make sure that you, where's my correct slide? You uh, jump over to our website, beadshop.com, and you'll find all the information on the project and the products that I used today. I'm going to have G um, Drea add that 11 up, the 11 42 02, I think I used the 11 up. It's not on that list. And then um, you'll find this under Wanderer is the name of the piece that I, I called it. Uh, but do sign up for our newsletter for all the latest info on um, everything we do here at Beach Shop, from new releases to, I don't know, chatty business to whatever it is we want to share with you on our newsletter. You can go right to the homepage 
at beadshop.com and sign up. And of course, you want to follow us on social on our Insta at beadshop.com. Join us over in our Facebook group at the bead table. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. If you're watching us live or on the replay, hit that like and subscribe button so you never ever miss a video or an announcement or whatever it is we have to tell you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, you guys, for joining us. I will see you Friday for the trunk show, the live trunk show. Uh, do remember that the beads will not, they're going to go up. Um, they're actually, I don't think they will go up. They're going to go up and live at noon. So you won't see them on the website before then. So that's 12 o'clock Pacific time on Friday, January 21st. The show that I do on Friday is going to give you a preview up close and personal of everything that I have. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of um, these beautiful African beads um, and we'll chat a little bit about that. So it's going to be um, a lot of fun. So that's my story, my dear friends. Hang in there. Um, warmer weather is coming soon. Stay safe. Please wear that mask. Please wash those hands. Um, and we are thinking of you and are thankful for you every minute. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you Friday for the Trunk Show.